Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video uh, is, I suppose it's the fourth or fifth video in this particular series dealing with Boolean expressions. And uh, more importantly, this particular short video uh, deals with how to take a Boolean expression and how to reduce it or simplify it into its, I suppose, most reduced form using Boolean algebra and more importantly, the identities that we have defined in the first video in this particular series yeah the first video in this particular series we defined a number of identities we defined 17 important identities uh, as I mentioned before that there is a lot more than 17 uh, but these are these are really important and they will help in the vast majority of cases uh, with the reductions that we have to that we have to perform okay so let's have a look at this particular expression it's uh, a bar is anded with uh, a or B bar uh, or a anded with a or C or B ended with A or C bar, uh, or A bar ordered with C bar bar ended with A or B. Okay, so this Boolean expression has a number of, I suppose, let's say, operations. Uh, they're the ands sim uh, simpl uh, signified by a dot, they're the ors signified by a plus, and they're the inversions or the inverters or negations simplified by by a bar. Um, so what we want to do is we want to try to reduce this down into the minimum number of gates possible. Uh, I suppose the first step that I like to that I like to apply to my expressions is where there is an application of the Morgan's law. Uh, we should probably apply that first. Where we can apply it, we should apply it. Uh, but in particular, where we have a negation across an OR operation, we should convert that into, I suppose, a product uh, with the Morgan's law. Now, the Morgan's law tells us that when we, it's, I suppose it's rule number 16, uh, that when we have a bar across an OR, it's equivalent to the inversion of both operands and together. So maybe that's what we'll do first, is we'll take the, the OR here with the bar across this operator and we'll apply the Morgan's law, which gives us, uh, it gives us A bar anded with, uh, A bar anded with B bar, okay, so the A or B bar reduced based on the Morgan's law, the A bar, the A or B bar, A or B bar reduced down to A bar and with B bar. Uh, there's no De Morgan's law in the next uh, in the next term, so we'll just write that down as is. Uh, we don't have to. We could apply another law, the distributive law, but let's just do it in in stages where we do uh, one operation at a time. Uh, then we have B ended with once again here's De Morgan, so this becomes A bar ended with C bar. Uh, or with, and we have the Morgan again here. We have the bar across an OR, so this becomes A bar bar ended with C bar bar uh, ended with A or B. Okay. Uh, so what can we do next? Well, there's a number of things that we can do next. Uh, I suppose maybe one simple thing that we could do by looking across here is that we have these particular operands a bar bar and c bar bar, uh, which are double negations. Um, and what we know from our rules is that a double negation, yeah, okay, is simply equal to the term itself. So they, the negations, let's say they, 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 they absorb or they're eliminated. Yeah, okay. So we have a bar bar is equivalent to a. So rewriting this particular expression, this would give us uh, a bar ended with a bar. B bar, uh, ord with A, anded with A or C, ord with B, anded with A bar, C bar, ord with, well, A bar bar is just A, so that's to be anded with C bar bar is just C, and that's to be anded with A or B. Okay. Uh, and then what we'll do is, I suppose, the next application. Let's just go through that again. Once we're given an expression, the first thing we'll do is we'll try to apply De Morgan's laws to reduce them into products. So that's what we did. We tried to get any get rid of any double negations. That's what we did here. And maybe what we should do next is we should distribute. Yeah. Okay. And this is just a product. This is like two times two times three is the same as two times two times three. So let's just rewrite that as a bar, a bar, b bar. I'm just throwing away the association. Uh, here we have a times a or c. We can distribute the A on the A or the C to give us uh, A times A or A times C, 
We're just multiplying out the brackets in this particular algebra. And once again, this is like 2 times 3 times 4. It makes no difference in what order we do it. So we throw away the association. So this gives us uh, B times A bar times C bar. And here we have A times C, or A ended with C ended with A. So this becomes A ended with C ended with A. Or A ended with C ended with B. So A ended with C ended with B. Okay. So what you can probably see now, and this is the important point, is that what we have is we have a sum, okay, okay, of product terms, okay. Uh, I suppose the product terms are called conjunctions, and the sums are called disjunctions. Uh, so this is a, I suppose, in this particular, in this particular, this is a sum of products, yeah, uh, which is really where we would like to get to. Okay. The next rule that I like to apply is, I suppose, it's a multiple application of the associative law and the commutative law. And really what we'd like to do, if I was to put it in English, is we'd like to reorder all the products in alphabetical order. So all the products should start with an A followed by an A bar, a B, a B bar, a C, a C bar where possible. Now, this particular product here is already ordered, so it's A bar, A bar, B bar. This is already ordered, it's A, A. This is ordered, it's A, C. Uh, this isn't ordered, this in order would be A bar, B, C bar. This in order would be A, A, C. And this in order here would be A, B, C. Okay. Now that we have everything in order, we should look for some of the important the important commonalities. Uh, one of our rules that we have is, you can see that we have an A bar, an A bar, we have an A and A, we have an A and A. And one of our rules says to us, the indemnitance law says that A ended with A is equal to A. So anything ended with itself is just itself or the original thing. So this term here reduces to be simply A bar, A bar is just A bar ended with B bar or a ended with A is simply A, or A ended with C is A ended with C. There's no nothing to reduce here, so it's A bar, B, C bar, and this here becomes A ended with C, and this is or with A ended with B ended with C. Okay, brilliant. Now, what we could do is we could apply the commutative law, where we could commute these two terms here, put the two ACs together, Okay, uh, let's actually do that. So we have A bar, B bar, or A, or A bar, B, C bar, or A bar, C. I've flipped these two terms here. And then I have or with A, C, or with A, B, C. Okay, and now what I'll do is I'm going to associate these two things together here. And what we end up with is, well, what we know is from our identities is that a ordered with A is just A. So this is another reduction or elimination. Uh, this term here uh, simply reduces down to A and it was C. So now we have A, B bar, ordered with A, ordered with A bar, B, C bar, ordered with A bar, A, C, uh, ordered with A, B, C. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is, you can see now th these two terms have something in common. They have an A and a C. And there's an A and a C here. I'm just going to get them all in order. And I'm also going to reintroduce a one so that there's three operands here, okay, which we can do because one of our rules, one of our identities says, uh, we don't have to just get rid of a one by going to an A. We can take the A and we can introduce a one. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to rewrite this as A bar, B bar, or A, or A bar, B, C, or a C one or and I'm gonna commute to be in the C and with an association to give me A C B. Okay. And now we have commonality. This is reversing the distributive law, which says to us that the distributive law says that when we have an A times a B or a C, it's the same as A B or A C. Now what we have here is we have and we have the the left, the right hand side of our distributive law, and we're going to reverse it back. So really what we're going to do is we're going to take out the commonality. So this becomes A bar B bar or A or A bar B C bar. What's common here is A C, take it out to be ended with a one or a B. And what we know is here is that anything ordered with one, anything ordered with one is just one. So this becomes a bar, B bar, or A, or A bar, B, C bar, or A, C. Okay, 
ended with ended with one. Okay. So we're nearly there. You can see that we've gone from a complicated expression down to an expression that has one, two, three, four terms, and the terms are a lot smaller than what we had previously. Uh, and let's see if we have any other commonality. Uh, I suppose these two terms here have an a in them. Yeah. So we could rearrange this to be uh, a b bar, uh, or a bar b c bar, or a, and I'll introduce a one. And this is just or a with c. I'll take out the commonality, which is an a. So this becomes a bar b bar, or with a bar b c bar, or with. And once again, I'm doing the same as I did previously. There's a common t common operand here. It's an a. That's to be ended with a one or a c. And once again, anything or with a one is just a one. So this becomes a bar b bar, or with a bar b c bar. Uh, or with a and it with and it with one. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that we can do? The question is, is there anything else common between the terms? There's an a bar b bar here. There's an a bar here. There's a b and a c bar. There's no real commonality. The only commonality is an a bar here. There's nothing common between this term and this term here. Uh, so we don't really have any other option here, but maybe to just say that, well, we could take this this expression here, okay? Uh, we could look at these two terms here and take out the commonality, which is an a bar, a bar times b bar, or b c bar. And we could ask ourselves the question, what does this here reduce down to, okay? Uh, to figure out what this looks like, we probably need to construct a true table. So let's construct a two table for our B and our C's, B, C, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? And let's figure out what B bar is. B bar is 1, 1, 0, 0. Let's figure out what C bar is. C bar is uh, 1, 0, 1, 0. Let's calculate B and with C bar. B and with C bar. What B and with C bar is going to be the B and with C bar gives us a 0, gives us a 0, gives us a 1, gives us a 0. Okay, and now let's do the or, the B bar or. So we have B bar or with B and with C bar which gives us, well, that gives us a 1, a 1, a 1, a 0. What does this look like? Well, we know the AND gate, uh, an A or a B. The AND gate AB looks like 0, 0, 0, 1. So actually, this is actually equivalent to the ANDing of, of our two terms. Okay, So uh, it's actually the inversion of the AND, yeah, because that would go to 0, 0, 0, 1. So actually, this term here is equivalent to uh, B ended with C bar, so this becomes A ended with B ended with C, C bar, okay? So now what we have is our term becomes this, this is reduced to this, A ended with B ended with C bar, or with, or with A, okay? Uh, the Morgan's Law, there's one, two operations here, there's one, two here, so this would reduce down to, I suppose, it would be A or with B and with C bar or with A. Okay, I think that's the best we can do with this particular reduction. Um, I hope that was helpful. I know it's quite fast, but I suppose the important point here is that all we are doing is applying where we can. We're applying our Boolean identities uh, to our reduction. Uh, once again, I hope that was helpful. This was uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.